Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. Uh, despite being a public health specialist, I opted to uh, present on, on education because uh, uh, I realized that education is uh, closely linked with the cultural dip diplomacy. Uh, and that's why uh, I'm presenting a case from Afghanistan and uh, uh, then proposing a, a, a solution for uh, cultural diplomacy. Uh, you guys may know uh, where Afghanistan is located, so if not, you can find it out in, the, uh, in that small map on the globe. Uh, and this is the map of Afghanistan where the country is located. So we are surrounded by uh, great countries like Pakistan, Iran, uh, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, and we have uh, a small border with, with, with China. Uh, Afghanistan, you know, has been in turmoil since uh, uh, 1977 so we've been in war for, for more than 30 years but uh, hopefully the situation will change and we are hopeful we are optimistic uh, uh, that, that we will overcome all the challenges and problems uh, so here is a picture of, of little kids from Afghanistan uh, and there is a an Afghani poem which says that uh, no matter uh, if children are from east or west their style of smiling is the same. So, so they, they, the children has the same hopes, the same wishes, and the same dreams for their future. So uh, in Afghanistan, the children are going to school. Uh, uh, girls are going to school. Boys are going, going to school. And the situation is improving. And I will show you some of the slides. So here, uh, in 2001, we had uh, somehow 100,000 students at, at schools, uh, but in 2012 the number uh, increased to 800,000. So, so that's a, a great progress. We have 800 boys and girls going to school. And then there are some more indicators. For example, that's the number of teachers. In 2001 we had 2,000 teachers. Now we have 196,000 teachers. Uh, there was only there were only 340 uh, 340 schools while we have now more than uh, 15,000 uh, schools. Uh, there were only four teaching, teachers training colleges in Afghanistan, and now we have 42. So that's uh, promising, isn't it? Uh, when it comes to higher education, so we had only 6,000 uh, students uh, who, were, uh, who were enrolled in, in universities. Now the number grew to 99,400 something. So that's a big now change, yeah? We had only 460 professors teaching in, in universities, and now we have uh, 3,870. Uh, the same. So we had only six universities throughout the country, while uh, in 2012 we have we had 31, and I'm 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 sure it, this number will be more than 40 now. So. Despite all these progresses uh, we made, uh, still there are uh, issues uh, in the country. When you see to these bars, these are the number of students uh, per province, uh, per 100,000 population from each province. So you see from uh, in some of the provinces which are more peaceful, like uh, in Kabul, which is the capital, and some other big cities, this number is very high. So more students per 100,000 population find their way to go to university and to to, to, to do their higher education. While in some insecure provinces, this number is very small. For example, in this Nuristan province, which is located in the east of the country, which is very insecure, only 3.4 students per 100,000 population find their way to go to, to universities. While this number is around 282 in one of the provinces, or it is 236 in, in, in another province. So it, it, it's very alarming. You know, it gives us uh, 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 a message that something is wrong. So there is a big disparity between provinces which are secure and the provinces which are insecure. So students not going to schools, they are, can be easily targeted by anybody uh, and they can easily be uh, used for their purposes. I mean, they can be brainwashed by, by the Taliban or the Al-Qaeda or any other terrorist group, and they can be, you know, turned into suicide bombers even. So <coughs> this is the, 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 the difference I'm 
portraying in a picture. So those are the students who have access to education uh, in the secure provinces and big cities, while in rural villages, these kids don't have access to education. And there are so certain problems, like main issues are schools are closed in war zone. So in most of the provinces which are located in the provinces where there is ongoing conflict, mainly in the border with Pakistan and Iran, the student cannot go to school because there is no school. Taliban and the other insurgent groups, they, they close the school. Uh, uh, so people do, don't, don't have any facility to send their kids to uh, seek education. This is one side of uh, the coin, uh, that the children are not receiving education. They remain illiterate. But the other side of the coin is that they are targeted by the huge propaganda of the Taliban and you know the other insurgent groups. Uh, they don't have information about very basic and important concepts such as democracy, human rights, cultural diversity. So they are kept you know, in, in, in darkness. And that's very uh, dangerous because those people, when they grew up, that generation, it's very hard you know, to, to deal with them. So they, they are kept uh, aside, you know, outside, outside the rest of the world. Uh, they are illiterate. They, they cannot read. They cannot write. And in the meantime, they don't have information about other cultures you know, the, the, the diversity, uh, they don't know what human rights are, what democracy is, uh, you know, and the only thing they know is the Talibanized uh, rules and, and, you know, the very backward uh, things. Uh, and I, I already mentioned that there's wise, widespread propaganda by the Taliban and the terrorist groups against the, the, the Western uh, communities, Western societies, and, and you know democratic countries and, and, and other nations uh, which are uh, uh, which they don't like and in my view there are consequences uh, for the country for the region and also for the world so there is a Pakistani uh, poet who, who, who said a poem uh, some 50 60 years ago who said that Afghanistan is uh, the heart of Asia and if Afghanistan is in peace, the whole Asia is in peace. And if Afghanistan is corrupt, the whole Asia would be corrupt. And I think uh, uh, it's, it's, it's more than Asia. It's, it's uh, you know, the world. If Afghanistan is uh, not in peace, then the whole, whole world will be affected. And we uh, knew that during the past few years, uh, that uh, those people uh, who were you know, hidden in Afghanistan and they had, uh, targeted different uh, Sports and throughout the world through their terrorist attacks, and if we, you know, don't do anything about these children who don't have access to education and who are uh, under the direct uh, influence of the Taliban propaganda, so there is the fear that uh, and, and concern that any time they can be turned against any uh, nation in the in the world. So I have a very simple solution which I proposed uh, earlier that was mentioned that global problems needs global solution. But, but I, I, I slightly modify it. Uh, it's my own definition. So I, I think global problems requires global interventions, but local solutions. So and, and, and from past 12 years uh, since, since the international engagement in Afghanistan, I was witness of, of, of so many uh, experiences that the international community came, they supported the Afghans, and they supported a, a local solution to so many problems, which worked. So like I showed you some of the indicators that, that showed the progress, specifically in the education uh, sector. We have similar pro uh, progress in, in the health sector, and rural development, and so many other areas. So what I sub uh, was, would, would propose here is, you know, that still the international community uh, support is strongly required uh, in the country, but uh, uh, we need to, you know, redefine that, that 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 intervention that we are applying in Afghanistan, you know, and adopt it to to the local context and local culture. So what we can do is, you know, for most of the insecure provinces where uh, most of them are outside the government uh, control, uh, like like in the south, west, and in east of the 
the country, the rural areas, they, they, there is no government control. So uh, I think some of the students can be uh, chosen, uh, selected from those areas, the most talented students. Uh, they can be trained in, 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 in urban centers, uh, education centers, uh, which have proper facilities, and they can send they can be sent back to, to their villages to serve like teachers. So this is, this is a, a kind of long-term solution because we train people from the very rural areas and then uh, send them back to, to, to the communities. So they, they, they train more people. And I think this is a very sustainable uh, way as well. And I think since Afghanistan is a very traditional society, so we need to uh, kind of try tailor the, those, those education uh, centers uh, uh, for these people. So we, we need to teach them science as well as some religious uh, uh, subjects. So, so they, when they go back to their communities, they also talk about religion and then you know, they shape the science in, 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 in a way that is acceptable, acceptable to, to, to people. And from the other hand, those students would serve as role models for others. So they will be educated, they will have a, a job, they will be like teachers, and, 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 and they could be role models for others. So other people will be convinced to send their uh, kids to, to, to schools. Uh, somebody was telling me a story of uh, a general in, in Afghanistan uh, back in, uh, during the monarchy, 30 years back, that he would send his kids to his village, uh, and, and they were, they, he, he would buy him very nice, uh, you know, outfit, uh, very chic, and, and he, he, he was thinking that this can serve you know, as, as, a, as a, a motivating factor for the people uh, in the village. So the people would see uh, them and then he would say, since I went to school, I'm educated, and now my kids are very you know, organized and they, they, are, they are smart, so, so you can also send your children to, <laughs> to school. So this way, if we take a number of students from all these villages which are outside the government control and you know, educate them in, in urban city centers and then, then send, it, send them back to uh, those provinces. Uh, hopefully they will serve as role, role models for, for other people. Uh, the international troops during the past 12 years, when they went to villages, uh, they didn't have proper information about local cultures and they made a lot of mistakes and they sensed, you know, uh, sensitized people uh, against them. So my suggestion is that special Yes, cultural sensitization programs should be, uh, you know, uh, uh, established. You know, the, so that the, the the troops coming to Afghanistan have proper information about the local culture, because Afghanistan is a very diverse country. Uh, so in Afghanistan, there are so many different ethnic groups, different you know, uh, sex, you know, and different languages. So you need one one needs to to have proper. Uh, cultural information when uh, wants to go there, mm. and even the, another solution is you know to to establish uh, tailor-made education centers inside the villages uh, in form of madrasas. Madrasas are the religious schools, which are you know very popular in, in Pakistan. So we can still form or establish madrasas in uh, in villages, small madrasas. But in the meantime, we can include uh, different topics of, of science and, and, and biology and chemistry uh, together with, with uh, the religious uh, topics. And, and we can uh, recruit some teachers uh, to, to serve there and, and teach people, uh, students. Uh, that would be a way uh, which would be acceptable to, to very remote communities in, in the country. And another way which uh, was earlier uh, presented by one of the, the presenters uh, who went to Pakistan and you know worked, worked with the school, the, the, this uh, school children exchange program. I am uh, also proposing the same program for, for Afghanistan, so that students from Afghanistan, uh, you know, uh, are provided with opportunities to learn English more, uh, and and then. Uh, go through exchange programs to other parts of, of the world and also other students come to Afghanistan and you know exchange these these programs and this this also can be done through uh, you know technology uh, information technology through video conferencing and, and, and other innovative ways so this way we would help uh, those children uh, 
who are you know uh, condemned to to remain outside the uh, development of the rest of the world and they don't have any information about the rest of the world and and which will uh, promote cultural diplomacy in the future between Afghanistan and rest of the world and with this I'm ending my brief presentation uh, thank you so much if you have any question or comment <laughs> thank you so much uh, you know I earlier kind of mentioned that Afghanistan is a very uh, traditional society and religious religion is uh, considered as a very important element of, 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 of the local culture and people's life. And we, we during the history, uh, we had some leaders in the country who uh, tried to uh, introduce some reforms in the country. And one of them was King Amanullah, who was uh, in Afghanistan since uh, somehow 100 years ago. He wanted to introduce, you know, uh, a lot of Western typed <laughs> type reforms in the country. And there was a very uh, huge uh, resistance to that. And, and it's, it's still in people's minds. So whatever you bring to Afghanistan should be wrapped a, in, in a religious way. And th that's one side. Another side is, you know, to teach people the, the real face of the, the religion, the real face of Islam. Islam is not uh, a religion of, of, of terror. It's not a religion of, of you know, uh, fear. So Islam is a religion of peace. So when we teach those people the real face of Islam, they will go back to, to their communities, you know, and then eliminate those misunderstandings that people have, uh, and, and they were provided by the terrorist organization and anyone else. Yeah, that's a very, di a very difficult question, but still we, we have some, some of the best practices which were implemented by the Ministry of Education in Afghanistan. For some of these, uh, uh, areas. Uh, so what they did, they uh, provided uh, extensive, intensive uh, and accelerated education programs for some of the students which uh, uh, came from those uh, insecure provinces. So their quality of education was very low because they, they would not the full year of uh, their classrooms, you know. So most of the year uh, they, they would be out of the class due to war and so many other uh, things. So. The, the government established uh, accelerated programs in, in big cities and they uh, brought those, those graduated high school graduates and you know they, they trained them for another year so that they get prepared for university and it, it worked very well so that's another way uh, but what, what uh, the most important message, message that I was trying to give here was you know uh, that for local problems we need to find local solutions. That's one of the solutions. Yeah. But yeah, but we can uh, you know, think of other solutions as well. And two of the solutions I, I, I propose. I think, you know, uh, I agree with you that so many children are going to Pakistan to get religious education in, in Pakistani madrasas. And most of those madrasas are located in tribal areas, which is pretty much out of control of even the Pakistani government. And it shows a, a demand for education. Even in those rural areas, people, you know, have a desire to send their kids to, to, to get something, even if it is a religious, uh, uh, you know, education, but they, they, they are sending their kids. So, yeah, if we establish madrasas close to their houses, so it will decrease uh, the number of students being sent to tribal areas, you know, so they will be... Uh, educated uh, next to their houses and, and that, that's possible.